أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تعمتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون صدق الله العظيم. I seek refuge with Allah from Satan the rejected in the name of Allah who is most gracious, most merciful. Alhamdulillah. Once again, we thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. For sparing our lives and giving us the help and guidance of coming out and offering our Juma Salah. Praise be to Allah, who created for you all things that are on earth. He knows the secrets of the heaven and the earth, and knows what you reveal and what you conceal. He is the master of the day of judgment, when one soul shall not avail another nor shall intercession be accepted for her, nor shall anyone be helped from outside. And I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, who chooses for his special mercy whom he wills, for he is the Lord of grace abounding. To him belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. Besides him, we have neither patron nor helper. To him belongs the east and the west, and everything renders worship to him. He has chosen the faith for you. Then die not except in the faith of Islam. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and messenger, the leader of guidance, and the chosen messenger to conclude the divine message to mankind. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow his blessings on his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his family his companions and his followers alhamdulillah my dear brothers and sisters for today's khutbah i have chosen the topic problems why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses problems some of us have big problems, some of us have small problems, and problems come in all different ways. But today, I'll give you five reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses problems. The problems you face will either defeat you, develop you, depending on how you will respond to them. Unfortun unfortunately, most people fail to see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to use problems for good in their lives. They react foolishly and resent their problems rather than pausing to consider what benefit they might bring. He, he, here, the ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to use these problems in your lives. One, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses problems to direct you. Sometimes Allah must light a fire under you to get you moving. Problems often point us to a new direction and motivate us to change. Is Allah trying to get to your attention? Sometimes it takes a painful situation to make change or make us change 
our ways. Secondly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses problems to inspect you. People are like tea bags. If you want to know what's inside them, just drop them into hot water. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested your faith with a problem. What do problems reveal about you? When you have many kinds of problems, you should be full of joy because you know that these troubles test your faith and this will give you patience. Thirdly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses problems to correct you. Some lessons we have learned only through pain and failure. It's likely that as a child, your parents told you not to touch the hot stove, but you probably learn by being burnt. Sometimes we only learn the value of something such as health, money, a relationship by losing it. It was the best thing that could have happened to me, for it taught me to pay attention to your laws. Fourthly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses problems to protect you. A problem can be a blessing in disguise if it prevents you from being harmed by something more serious. Last year, a friend was fired for refusing to do something unethical that his boss had asked him to do. His unemployment was a problem, but it saved him from being convicted and sent to prison a year later when management actions were eventually discovered. You intend to harm me, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended it for good. And fifth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses problems to protect you. Problems, my dear brothers and sisters, when respond to correctly, are character builders. Allah is far more interested in your character than your comfort. Your relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your character are the only two things you are going to take with you into eternity. We can rejoice when we run into problems. They help us learn to be patient. And patience develops strength of character in us and help us trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more each time we use it until finally our hope and faith are strong and steady. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is at work in our lives, even when you do not recognize it or understand it. But it's, but it's much easy and profitable when you cooperate with him. Brothers and sisters, success can be measured not only in achievements, but in lessons learned, lives touched, and moments shared along the way. A few points or notes. Prayer, salah, as well as dua is a step in the right direction. When we have problems, you know, sometimes we don't know what to do. But then something is missing in our lives. We have to check ourselves and see what is wrong with us. See what I am doing, if I am doing the right thing. See what I am, what I am not doing and what I have to do. Prayer, salah, as well as dua is a step in the right direction. We connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we pray for others, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens to us. He subhanahu wa ta'ala bless those whom we have prayed for as well as us too. 
Sometimes, when we feel safe and happy, realize that someone may have prayed for us. Brothers and sisters, worrying does not take away the troubles of tomorrow. It does take away the peace of today. We should or we shall not feel unhappy if people remember us only at times of need. We, we should feel privileged and that they think of us like a candle in the darkness of their life. When we are faced with a bad situation, know that we have three choices. We can let it define us, let it destroy us, or let it strengthen us. We learn through adversities to add faith to our faith. Al Miswar narrated that Am bin Uf said that the Apostle of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I am not afraid that you will be poor, but I fear that worldly wealth will be bestowed upon you as it was bestowed upon those who lived before you. So you will compete among yourselves for it, and they compete for it as they compete for it, and it will destroy you as it destroyed them. Brothers and sisters, when we love wealth much, we compete with each other for it. Satan or Shaitan lets jealousy and ill will enter our hearts. As a result, it does not matter how we earn the wealth, we restore to har haram means. Consequently, destruction follows. Wealth is like water in the ocean. And human beings are like the ships. The ships use the water in the ocean to travel long distance. This is a beneficial situation. However, if the water enters the ship, it will cause the ship to sink. The same useful water can destroy the ship. Similarly, we use our wealth for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This will benefit us. However, if we allow our wealth to enter our hearts, the same wealth can destroy us. Know, my brothers and sisters, that when we come to Allah walking, He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, comes to us running. Our attitude an approach towards our activities of life must be moral and proper according to the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is not haram to seek the bounties of this world providing we employ halal means. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, we can achieve a great deal of wealth through halal means. However, we should seek the bounties of the hereafter too, perhaps more than we seek the bounties of this world. The reason? The hereafter is everlasting. This world is just temporary. Good character and morals according to the sunnah of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should not sacrifice the ever living or the, or the everlasting bliss of the hereafter for the sake of some temporary worldly gains or pleasures. Hassan al Basri said, What is this world but a dream that a sleeper sees? He or she delights in it for a few moments and then wake up to face reality. Brothers and sisters, reality is our accountability in the hereafter. Every mistake we make is an opportunity for us to repent, make amends, and grow our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
despise the fact we disobey Allah, our Razak, He the Provider, nevertheless provides for us. He promised to provide for us and He is sticking to His promise. He does not go back on His word even though we do all the time. Many of us unsuccessfully chase after success all our lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling us to success five times each day at the masjid. Yet we ignore him. We strive and struggle to get to Al-Haram, the house of Allah at Makkah. This is good. May Allah reward us. Ameen. However, we do, however, do we realize how much we neglect this house in our neighborhood? My dear brothers and sisters, I could go on and on and on. But we must realize that this life is very short and we don't know when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call us. We don't know when the angel of death will visit us. Every day, the angel of death visits our homes at least three times. At least three times, the angel of death visits our homes. Are we aware of this? Some of us, you know, is healthy and strong. We are young and we say we have to live 50, 60 years. And we forget. We get so attached to this world, this dunya, that we forget the hereafter. My dear brothers and sisters, this life is short. This life is short and this world is only temporary. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy this world. As we have life, he has caused us, he has given us life, so too he will give us death. He will give us death. Life and death goes together. If you notice in our community, every day or every other day, there is janazah, we go and we pray for our brothers or for our sisters. Brothers and sisters, we got to take lessons from these. Every day we bury our dead and we don't take lessons. When we get, you know, when we are in that calamity, I must say that is not a calamity, but that is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we are in that position, then only then we think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam think about death at least 75 times or 70 times. Remember that. You know, so too, so too we have to remember that. Know that one day our time will come and we have to go. So let us all try and stock up in our lives. Let us all try and make that change in our lives. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us here in the Holy Quran, A'udhu billahi mina shaitanir rajeem Zalika bi anna Allah lam yakumu gayiran niyamatan an amaha ala qawmin Hatta yugayiru ma bi anfusihim Wa anna Allah sami'un alim This ayah is taken out from chapter 8, ayah 53. And the meaning of which, Allah will never change the grace which he has bestowed upon a people until they change what is in their own souls. Verily, Allah is he who hears and knows. My dear brothers and sisters, today we imitate others to the extent that we become part of them until we lose our identity as Muslims. We neglect 
or abandon Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We remove the Quran and the Sunnah from our lives. We need to be better Muslims. We are supposed to be the examples unto others. Others should follow us. We have it wrong. We have to change our own selves because Allah will never change the grace which he has bestowed upon a people until they change what is in their own souls. Verily, Allah is he who hears and knows. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guard us against the evil of our souls, our hearing, our sights, our tongues, and our hearts. May he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, guide us among those who he has guided aright and preserve us among those who he has preserved. May he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, take us for friends among those who he has befriended. May he guard us from the evil of that which he has ordained. May he make light in our hearts, light in our sights, light in our hearing, light in our tongues, and light in our souls. May he forgive our sins and open for us the gates of his mercy. Barakallahu nala wa lakum fil Qur'ani al-Azim wa nafana wa iyaakum bi ayati zikri al-Hakim inna hu ta'ala jawarun karimun maliku barrafu rahim. Astaghfirullah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, he nav mother who won a stay in a who won a stog of fear who won a woman who be won a tawaka lua lay won a uzu bila him in Shururian Fusina. Waming say ya malina. May ya had the hilla who fell a mudilla. Wamay you little who fell a had the Allah. ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعداد من صلى وصام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعداد من قاد وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل ملائكة المقربين وعلى إباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين إباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفخشاء والمنكر والبغي يا إذوكم لألكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله تعالى أولى وأولى وأأز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأكبر أقيم الصلاة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر